By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to set up the retail MCP on Claude. And you'll learn why direct access to your call history changes everything when making your agent better. This is a complete step-by-step -step walkthrough, and when you're done, Claude will be able to interact and see every agent that you have and the call history without you manually copy-pasting anything. Let me get the LLM details. There we go. Okay, yeah, I figured it out. This is so cool. You can do transcript analysis at scale. You can much more quickly iterate on single prompt agents. Finally, Claude will have visibility into your conversation flow agents. And you can finally leverage previous work and patterns, again, without copy pasting anything. So you will save time, eliminate friction, and give Claude full context of your agents. I'm Alejo, CEO of Amplify Voice. One of the biggest improvements we've had for making better agents faster is implementing this retail MCP on Claude. So I want to give a shout out to Kuba, our integrations expert, for making this a reality. But I need to give you a warning. This is going to speed you up. This is not going to just make your agents better. That's why we teach every single engineer at Amplify Voice to read prompts word by word, to really understand what the client wants and why they want that. That is what makes great agents, not just building it faster. So if you understand why you're building what you're building, you can deliver the right thing. If you read prompts word by word and iterate on them manually, that is how you increase your skills. And once you've mastered those two things, this is the next great step, which will help you deliver great agents at scale. So if you want to learn how to build great agents, I'll leave my prompting masterclass linked above so you can go check it out later. For now, let me show you how to set up the retail MCP. To set up the retail MCP, you're just going to need number one, your Claude desktop account. Keep in mind, it's the orange one, not the white one. This is a Chrome app and this is an app you download. Number two, you're going to need your retail API key, which you can find in settings and then API keys. You can create a new one. We're going to call it retail MCP test create. There's one more link you're going to need, which is the GitHub repo. You don't need to set up anything here. You just need to copy paste some values. Okay, now let's set this up from the beginning. We're gonna look at the repo. We have the step-by-step -step here. We're gonna open Cloud Desktop and then go to Settings. Click on the Developer tab and then Edit Config. Okay, that's easy enough. We're gonna open up the Settings. Now we're gonna go to Developer and we're gonna click on Edit Config. This is gonna open up a new tab that takes you to your clock desktop config.json. This is what we need to modify in order to give uh, Claude an awareness of what MCPs we have available. I'm going to delete all the MCPs that I have and start one from scratch. So you can follow along as well. So let's go to the GitHub repo. We're going to just copy this and then paste it in our clock desktop config.json. Okay, next we're gonna change our retail API key. So we're gonna change that. We're gonna go to our retail account, bam, copy, then go back here, and we're gonna paste that in, boom. After this is pasted in with the API key, what we're gonna do is quit Claude Desktop and reopen it. And then when we start a new chat, you can go to the tools and then scroll down and you'll see your retail MCP server right there. If you have multiple retail uh, uh, workspaces, just make sure you create one uh, uh, for each of your workspaces. So you can call them different things. For example, I'll call this one the retail AI MCP tutorials. Or if you're using this for multiple clients, then you'll just need to essentially copy this part over here, and then you, you just change the retail API key to represent that other workspace. And you can always just change the names of the MCP servers right there. For now, I'm gonna leave it the same. Okay, so we don't have any issues. I can activate that now, boom. We have access to all these functions, which is awesome. I'm gonna list all of my retail agents. And now Claude is going to go into my retail account and list out all of the agents. I'll retail the retail agents for you. Okay. So it ran the request. It got back every agent. It's thinking through 
uh, all those agents and how to organize them. Found 57 agents and it's listing them out. Keep in mind that uh, MCPs take up a lot of tokens. So you can't just run a ton of, of these functions. So keep them modular. So now I can see all my agents listed out. We um, club separated them by conversation flow agents and single prompt agents. A quick update, the retail team actually hasn't finished implementing the conversation flow, retrieving full conversation flows from uh, an MCP. You can still get it from the documentation by running this on your terminal with a token and the conversation flow ID. But that is the pain point that we're trying to solve with MCPs, uh, which is not copy pasting stuff. So hopefully a little bit of, of friendly peer pressure to the retail team helps them implement the conversation flow retrieval faster. Because as I know, uh, as I've experienced and people in the school community have also experienced, is, is, is hard to iterate on conversation flows. Actually, hard may not be the word, it's more tedious. More tedious than a single prompt agent. So iterating on an agent to make it better and better and better, that's the hard part. Where the, what the format is, single prompt or conversation flow, it's less tedious to iterate on a single prompt. So let's take one of these single prompts, let's say the calendar cancellation and rescheduling and retrieve the agent. Uh, uh, get the agent with that agent ID. And what you're gonna experience is you're very, very quickly going to run out of context window. So right now it's retrieving the agent. Let's say I wanna retrieve a second agent or a third agent or start making modifications on this or get a call history for this agent. Found only three calls for that agent. Yeah, that was also for a, for a demo. And I keep learning how to use this MCP better and better. For example, one of the things that I noticed is that getting the agent doesn't actually get me the prompt. I am gonna try get the prompt for the agent and what Claude's going to do is going to get the agent first. And then it's probably going to realize, wait, the prompt is not here. Get, let me get the LLM details. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I figured it out. This is so cool. Uh, so we figured out the need to, to get the, get retail LLM, which is actually what holds the prompt. And then it retrieves it. Boom. It's right there. And, um, here's the prompt. Uh huh. Awesome. Yep. That section is empty. Yeah. This is an actually an unfinished prompt. It just has those booking instructions and the conversation examples. So then if we get call history and then we start iterating on it, we're very, very quickly going to run out of context window. So you need to be strategic about creating new conversations. For example, uh, list all of my retail agents. You find out what, which one is the one you want to use. We chose this one and now I'm going to open up a new chat, retrieve the prompt for the retail agent, that, that agent ID. Awesome. And now we reset the context window. We have more to work with. So that's one hot tip that I definitely recommend that you do. And now we have a lot more space to work with. That's how you set up the MCP server on your cloud account. I want to keep this video very focused and step by step. On the next video, we're actually going to be iterating on a real prompt that I built in my prompting masterclass. And we're going to put it all together. This law firm agent with actual calls that I'm going to make and then use my master prompt in Claude to help iterate through those test calls to make the agent as good as it can be before we launch in production. So if that sounds helpful to you, please click the subscribe button so you stay tuned. And as a personal favor, if you click the like button, this video will get to more people and you'd be helping me in my mission of helping others build better. If you're gonna go further, learning in community is the best way to do that. We have a school community with four live events a week where me and the Empathy Voice team help others build and sell voice agents. So come check it out. I'd love to meet you in person and hear your story. I'll see you on the next one and remember to never stop prompting.